So I recently just did a video on these little tiny metal heat deflectors for the Triumph Tiger. If you haven't seen that video, it's this one, and I'll link it in the description. Go back and watch it after this one. In that video, I talk about how they help, but they don't really get rid of the problem. Now, Triumph is known for the heat coming off the engine onto the legs of the rider. A lot of people have gone away from the Tiger or not even considered it when they're looking for an ADV bike because of that heat issue. Also, in that video, I talk about how I remember seeing a snap-on heat deflector that was much bigger and more effective. If you didn't see it in that video, I said this. Now, I know I said I wanted to get the ones that clip in, but for some reason, for the life of me, could not find them this time. Um, I looked everywhere, everywhere online. Uh, I, I, did I dream it? I don't know. Um, but I'm, I, I swear those things exist where you just clip them in there. You don't have to drill the hole through. Um, but again, I couldn't find them. So now I'm always talking about how the ADV community is amazing. And with the power of YouTube, I found them. Well, actually, they found me. So I was sifting through my emails one day, and a guy named John from Arizona sent me an email and said, Hey, man, I saw your video. I'm the one that actually makes those snap-on deflectors. John and I got talking, and he sent me a pair to try out and test. So I got them. We're going to test them out. I wanted to show you, first off, the size difference. Look at that. When I reviewed these metal ones, I talked about if, if you could find a longer one, a wider one, it would pretty much take away that heat issue. So I'm really, really excited to see what these things can do. Again, we're talking twice the size. And installation is a breeze. So John has his own installation videos. And again, I will link those in the description. Uh, I will link John's eBay page. Um, he does all his sales through eBay. But again, it's super simple. It's just a snap-on part. So what you want to do is you want to make sure you're holding the entire piece. And if you can see it, there's a little kind of C-channel in there. And what that does is that snaps right in to your plastic here. And how it works is how, how it holds on there is basically resistance. So when you snap it in there, it kind of pushes up against itself and against the plastic here and it holds itself in. See if we can get this on here. And there we go. Snaps right in. So as you can see, it does stick out a little bit further, but it does go with the look of the bike. And you can tell that the kind of the cone of it shoots the air out this way, where the metal one was just kind of sitting here as, as basically a, a wall. But this one actually angles it all out and shoots it away from the leg. Here is the other side, in there nice and snug. You can look at it from behind the bike. If you're looking at it, you can tell it's there, but really, you don't notice it. So again, I wanted to thank John for reaching out. I think this could potentially be a really, really good product, and hopefully it solves the Triumph issue. Now let's get on the bike and see how it is. Okay, so a little bit more about John and how he came about these heat deflectors. Um, so John doesn't actually own a Tiger, nor even a Triumph. Uh, he's got a buddy who has one, and uh, his buddy rides the deserts out in Arizona. And as you know, the deserts can get mighty, mighty, mighty hot during the day. And he needed some type of solution for the heat on his legs, like the rest of us. Um, so John, being the problem solver that he is, uh, decided to try to take on the project and come up with something that worked for his buddy. So he took a bunch of measurements for his buddy's bike and came up with these deflectors. So one thing right off the bat you got to know is they are 3D printed. A lot of people will shy away right away because they don't think they can hold up. Um, John has done a couple different designs and so John uses the same grade of plastic that's already on the Triumph Tiger. The plastics that are on your bike right now are the same things he used for these deflectors. That being said, yes, they are 3D printed. Yes, there are stress lines 
Uh, yes, if you uh, mismanage them and abuse them, they can break. John is still currently working on the design, trying to fine tune it, trying to make it even stronger. Um, that's one of the reasons he sent them to me to test out. Uh, he wants an honest review and, and an honest opinion, and I am definitely going to give him that. Uh, it's only going to help make this product better. One good thing, though, is one, you can paint the current one. So I had the black ones because they, they match the bike. Um, but you can easily paint these to any color you want. They also, he is working on different color options. Um, I'll throw them up on the screen. I think he's got a white, he's got a red, an orange, a green. Uh, many different color options for you. So many different color options. And, and again, if you don't like those options, you can always paint whatever color you want. Now John hasn't been making these very long. Again, he is still in the preliminary stages of, of creating the perfect design. Uh, it is patent pending, so he's definitely moving through the process. And once he gets some more solid feedback and maybe tweak a little couple of, once he, once he gets some solid feedback and tweaks a couple of things, I, I think these could potentially be a freaking home run. But enough of the backstory, you wanna know do the dang things work so when I did the little metal ones the first thing I tried to do was find kind of where the air is going and all I had to do with those is put my hand on my knee like so and you could feel all the heat you know there wasn't much margin of error so for these ones with the hand on the knee I can feel a little bit of hot air moving on the back of my hand. Now that's significantly better than the smaller metal ones. Again, does it take the heat completely off your legs? No, no it does not. But with this top part here, it kind of grabs it and shoots it away and it does come out a little bit wider here and shoots it over your knee. Now if you're riding like this, yeah, you're going to feel it. But if you're riding with your legs against the tank, like most people do, you're not gonna feel it. So there was one question where he thought maybe it would shoot down the shins. Now I'm not getting much on my shin, and so I don't know what to say on that. I, I'm not feeling that. Uh, it's not a it's not a problem for me. One thing I want to point out is I am six one. So if you are six foot and over, you're gonna feel it a little bit more than someone that's under six foot. And that's because your knees are so much closer. Now, if your knees are back here, you're, I, you might not feel it at all. So if I move way back in the seat, yeah, I, I, I really don't feel anything. That's actually, yeah, I don't feel much there at all. So if you're short, if you're under six foot and you sit a little bit further back in the seat, even better. They cover even more. One thing I did notice is that when I'm riding a little more aggressively and I move my leg forward to shift, you can see right here, my knee's actually hitting it. Again, that's me forward in the seat riding aggressively trying to shift. Um, I have noticed that I've bumped it a few times. Is that a deal breaker? No. Um, is it something that's kind of annoying? Yeah, uh, but you know you got to you got to weigh your weigh your pros and cons here. Would you want a hot leg or do you want to bump your knee a, a couple times? And I'm not saying bump it to where it hurts. I'm just saying rubbing up against it. So it's not something that's gonna you know cause you pain over a long distance. One other thing I did notice is that, so now in New York, it's getting colder. So when I put the, wow, we didn't see that. When I put the first side on, um, everything was cold. The bike was cold, the plastics were cold, and the deflector itself was cold, uh, cause we hit a, a, a really cold spell there for a little while. So, and I did get a little stress crack on the bottom side of it. I think that's my fault. Um, John did send very specific instructions on how to install these and where to, you know, put pressure to clip it on. I didn't follow that. Um, I did that for two reasons. One, because I'm an idiot. 
and two because I feel like a lot of people are gonna you know people people will follow instructions but there's a lot of people that won't and you still got to kind of make those people happy too even though they're like me and they're dumb and it's their fault they're still gonna blame you so what are my overall thoughts if you use your Triumph Tiger as mainly a commuter or even 50% of the time commuter and you're in traffic and you have you know jeans or work pants on or whatever it is and you feel that heat a lot these will drastically change your experience for the better obviously and if you are someone like me that does more off-road who only really takes the road to get off-road I don't know if it's worth it and what I mean by that is there's not a whole lot of positive because when I'm riding off-road and I'm wearing proper riding gear thicker pants and I'm standing up a lot I no matter how hot it is out I don't think I've ever stopped and been like dang my my legs are on fire or crap I wish there wasn't so much heat coming off this bike this entire summer that I've ridden has been very hot and I don't remember one stopping and saying that with the type of riding I do so again if you are a commuter on this bike I think it's a product you should definitely look into Again, I will link John's eBay page in my description. Uh, the price of these is $110. Now, you can't really think of it as, geez, I'm paying $110 for a couple pieces of plastic. You're paying $110 for comfort riding your motorcycle. A motorcycle you pay $20,000 for, and you get annoyed because they dump heat, because Triumph, Triumph's design with their heat disbursement is, is ridiculous, and you get a whole bunch of heat on your legs. You spent twenty thousand dollars on a motorcycle, one hundred and ten thousand dollars on some on some deflectors that can eliminate maybe the number one problem with this Tiger is not a lot. And we're talking about John's time, John's effort, and all this stuff. And and again, he's trying to tweak his process. It's brand new. He's trying to tweak his process, make it faster, and that price can come down. So please don't look at it as, geez, I got to shell out one hundred and ten dollars for some plastic. It is worth it. Trust me. So the part you just saw was kind of like an initial review, uh, first impressions kind of thing. So I've been riding around for about a week now with those deflectors on, and I gotta say, John, you, you, you're really onto something there. Um, I think they do a fantastic job. During the last week, there was a time where I thought maybe I was starting to feel it again, maybe my first impressions were wrong. Um, but then I went ahead and took them off. As you can see, no longer on there. So I went ahead and took them off, and dang, I, I, it's night and day. Uh, I kind of forgot how bad it really was. So, again, if you guys are out there looking for some type of solution, even if it's not 100%, um, give John's deflectors a try. Um, again, it will be linked in the description. Uh, it's a link to the eBay page. I'm pretty sure that's all he has on there. Um, and I think with a couple more minor tweaks, then these things will be pretty rock solid. Um, so Triumph, if you're seeing this video, if you know about John's deflectors, what are you doing? Get a hold of them. Buy his patent. Do something. Fix this issue. All right, everybody. I had a great time. I hope you did too. Please like this video and don't forget to subscribe. Get the word out there. So goodbye.